He was a man who had two sons. His younger son came and said to him, Father, give me my share of the inheritance. So his father divided up his, up his property between them. And a short while later, the younger son got together all that he had and set off for a distant land and squandered all that he had in wide living. And when he had spent everything, he found himself in need. A great famine came upon that land, and he found himself in want. He hired himself out to a citizen of that land, and sent him out to his fields to attend the pig. He stood it wrong to weep at the pot that the pigs were eating. And then he came to his senses and said, How many of my fathers I had servants as enough food to eat, but here am I starving to death. I know what I will do. I will go back and I will say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and I have sinned against you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son, making me like one of your hired servants. As he began to make his journey from afar off, his father saw him. He leaped to his feet and ran towards him and wrapped his hands around him and kissed him. And he said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. His father called his servants and said, Put a new robe upon him, put a ring upon his finger and sandals upon his feet, kill the fat of calf, and let us celebrate. Because the son of mine, which was dead, was alive again. He was lost, but now is found. Praise the Lord. The message of the prodigal son. A young man, if you like, will experience the presence of God and the things of God. And also experience what it was to live in the outside world. And the Bible says it came a time for this young man, because the man had two sons. The youngest son at the time, he came and he came to the father and he said, Father, give me my share of the inheritance. If you like, he couldn't wait. You know, the Jewish man, you know, and we know this today, for somebody to receive an inheritance of their parents, the parents must pass away before they receive it. But this young man couldn't wait any longer. And it became a time in his life where he probably set his eyes on the things of God and he probably set them on the outside world. He probably looked to the finery, he probably looked to the nightlife, he probably looked to the things that the world had to offer. And he came to his father and he said, Look, give me my share of the inheritance. And the Bible says that the father, he divided up his property between two sons. And a short while later, we don't know how long, it could have been a month, a week, 12 months, we don't know how long. But the Bible does say, a short while later, the young son took all that he had and he went to a different land. And the Bible says that he squandered everything that the father gave him. Everything that he had, he squandered in the world. Everything his father would have worked hard for, everything his father would have grabbed for, and anything that he entrusted to the son, the Bible says that he squandered on wild living. The things that this young man done to that we can't explain behind this pulpit because there's women and children in here. And you know tonight, my friend, and it's a true fact is, is that when men and women today, when they walk away and they leave the presence of God, when they think today the grass is greener on the other side, sadly today it's not. Sadly today it's not. Just like this young man, we can feel, we can fall into this category, we can always think that the grass is greener on the other side. We can be greatly reminded, look at the life that I had before I was a Christian. Look at the places where I used to go to, the things I used to do, the things I used to get up to, the way I could get me living. Look at the way I lived. And sadly today, this young man took his eyes off the father and he went back into the world. 
And my God, did he go full steam ahead. The Bible says that he went and he spent everything on wild living. He would have walked into the South Pound, if you like, like a celebrity. He would have gained a lot of worldly powers. He would have gained a lot of things, and a lot of, a lot of things would, would have meant nothing to him. But the Bible says when he had spent everything, I believe his friends would have went. The good times would have went. When he thought that his hope and his prosperity was in the world, Sadly today, when he left the father's presence, he was worse off. And sadly today, maybe you're in this place and once you had a walk with God. Maybe once you were, you was a Christian, you bore the name of Christ, but now you've gone back into the world. And we know today as Christians, we know today the effect the outside world can do on a man and woman's life, don't we? I have no problem with the outside of the world as the problem is, is when the world comes inside of this. The Bible says even though you live in the world, you should not be a part of it. The problem that I see today is that many people today, you look at the outside world, they see what people's got. I want she's got. I want what he's got. And the problem is today, people, slowly but surely, they drift, they fall, and they drift, and they fall. Just like the prodigal son, he had everything on display. God gave him his own free will to do whatever he wants. And tonight, my friend, in this place, God gave you tonight a free will to do whatever you want. You have a choice to make to the moment you wake up, to the moment you go to sleep. You have a great choice to make of who you are going to serve. And sadly today, at this time, this young man chose to serve the world. He chose to leave the presence of God. He chose to leave what he had in God, the peace, the fellowship, the brothers and sisters in Christ. He chose to leave it for the world. And sadly today, Christians do the same. Christians do the same thing. They think the world has more to offer out there. But sadly, when you look according to the character of this young man, he had full and plenty, but the Bible says that when he wasted it, he found himself in need. The Bible says a great famine came upon the land. He was a mum. How many of you in this place can set their mind back four years ago to COVID-19? When the great famine came upon the land, you couldn't go to work. Shops were empty. People were killing, me, killing themselves on the tight road. Never mind food. Just like this day with this young man, a great famine came upon the land. He wasted everything. And let me tell you something tonight, my friend, in this place. If you are not careful, if you don't keep your eyes on Jesus, if you don't live according to God's word, sadly, slowly but surely, you are going to waste what God has entrusted you on. Slowly but surely today, Christians today, if you don't keep your eyes on Christ, slowly but surely, just like a boat when it goes in water, just leave it for a moment, it will drift. Slowly and slowly and slowly. The longer you keep out the word of God, the longer you keep out the fellowship, the longer you keep from the word of God, slowly but surely, according to the word of God, you will drift and you will drift. And before you know it, you will find yourself back into the world doing the same thing that this young man was doing, feeding pigs. The Bible says he hired himself out to a citizen of the land. And he attended him, he sent him out to his field to feed the pigs. For a Jewish man, this was unlawful to do. A Jewish man couldn't associate with a pig, never alone feed it. The Bible says that the pods he was chucking on, he stood up round to eat it. He longed to eat it. And sadly today, when Christians backslide and they go back into the world, all we do is devour rubbish. All we do is long for the rubbish. 
Things that will never benefit you as a man and as a woman. Sometimes today we wonder why we fall out of churches. Sometimes today we wonder why we fall away from God so quickly. Sometimes today we wonder why, why we can't go on with God. Question yourself tonight in your salvation. Where are you in Christ? You can't have one foot in Christianity. You can't have one foot with God. You have to be all in or you have to be all out. It's either you're a Christian or it's either you're not. It's either you're black or it's either you're white. You can't be lukewarm. It's either you're a man and woman who's sold out for the things of God or if you're going to be sold out for the world, then live it. Don't be a miserable sinner. If you're going to live for the world, then live for the world. But if you're going to live for Jesus tonight, live for Christ. Don't fall in the category of this prodigal son. That he found himself feeding pigs. The Bible says it's like someone turning them back to the swallow, like a dog turning them back to its vomit. Went back to his own life. Thought it offered more. He thought he could reap more back being an unsaved man or an unsaved woman. He thought that going back to the nightclubs or going back to the public houses was going to benefit something to him. But sadly today, I'll tell you what the world wants to offer you. The world wants to offer you today the rubbish that it's got to give. And that's being in the presence of pigs. And if we're not careful today, this is how we become. The longer you stay out of fellowship, the longer you stay away from God, the longer you stay out of the way of God, you can do what you want. You can feel me, but I tell you one thing, if you don't stay close to Jesus, slowly but surely, you will fall into the same category as this young man. Sin is sin today. Sin is sin. God doesn't identify sin the way me and you do. The Bible says, for all the sin and falling short of the glory of God. By far deed in action, each and every one of us in this place, we have let God down some way, somehow, some form. We have failed and we have missed the mark. You might not compare yourself to my standard, but tonight the standard you need to pay yourself to is the standard of Christ. Not my standard. Because if you look at me tonight, you will fail. And if you look to Christ tonight, you'll never fail. He stands to his perfection tonight. And sin comes with a price to pay. Just your man in the beginning, everything was going well as a Christian. He had peace, joy, and happiness. And the minute he backs in and went back into the world, his life was in terror, it was in chaos because of sin. This is the reason why today we see so many people suffering with depression. We see so many people dividing marriages. We see so many young men and women taking drugs and alcohol. We see so many men today who want to be women and women want to be men. This is the reason why today we see this. And it's because of sin. And tonight, my friend, if you're not promoting Christ and Jesus alone, you're only going to promote sin. Sin comes with an hefty price. The Bible says the soul that sins is the soul that dies. One thing is a penalty for sin. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. Separation from God. Eternal punishment. And sadly today, people today, I've been witnessing, I've spoke to many people. We spoke to a man there on Thursday. The man was laughing in my face and he knew he was going to go to hell. Are you laughing tonight? When you hear about hell, do you laugh? Do you truly think in your mind that you have all the time in the world to repent? Because the Bible says, the book that I hold in my hand tonight says today is the day of salvation. You don't promise tomorrow. You don't promise next week. You don't promise Friday. You don't promise Tuesday. Today is the day of salvation. When you wait of God and wait of the Lord, do not add in your heart, the Bible says. Sin comes with a price to pay. Not only will it destroy you, not only will it destroy your children and your marriage, it will separate you from a holy and a loving God. It will separate you from God by the things you say, by the things you do, and the life that you live, the way you conduct your life, the way you get your living, the way you think, the way you act, the way you talk. The people that you conduct yourself around with, 
the backbiting, the cheating, the lying. One day will be, will, will be, all sin one day will be revealed before the presence of God. Sin was hidden and done in secret. One day the Bible says we'll be brought to life on the day of judgment. Everything that me and you said, forth and done, one day will be brought to the light of God. You can't hide or run from the presence of the Lord. Where can we go? If I go to the bottom of the hill, the Bible says that he is there. If I go to the height, he is there. The Bible says that the highs of him will judge the heart one day. And it's the bones of the heart that, the, that, that God will judge. He will judge you according to the motive of your heart. And the Bible says that the heart is beyond deceitful. That's why it takes God to break it. It takes God to mold it and to shape it and fold it to the vessel that he wants it to be. Sin comes with a price to pay. Not only will it separate you from God and destroy you as a man, but one day you will end up in hell for it. For eternity. You will end up in hell. Listen to me tonight, young men in this place. You women in this place, get it through your head. The judgment day is coming. The cry of God, the call of God is going out. Are you listening? Are you paying attention? Because Christ is coming soon. Don't tell me that you're a Christian. Don't tell me that Jesus is coming back. Show me that you're a Christian. Show me that Jesus is coming back. It's not about talking the talk, but it's about walking the walk of Christ. Sin comes with a price to pay. Death and destruction, a place of utter darkness, a place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Sadly today, this is where sin will take us. And this young man realized the state that he was in. He realized and acknowledged the state and the condition that his life was in. And let me explain something to you tonight. Let me ask you a question. Do you realize tonight the state you're in? Do you understand since you fell away from God and you look at your life now? The life that you once had and the life that you are now. Do you realize tonight and understand the state you are in? The Bible says that he acknowledged the state that he was in. He realized what he was doing. He said, I know what I will do. We need to take a note out of this book and be like this young man and say, look, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to the Father. I'm not going to continue living in sin. I'm not going to continue playing Christianity. I'm not going to continue watering the pigs. But I'm going to go back to the Father. And you can imagine now this young man going back to the father and the father running towards him. And you can imagine in his head, what is he going to do or what is he going to say? I tell you what the Bible says that the father will. He wrapped his hands around him. He embraced him. He kissed him. He restored him. And that's what Jesus wants to do with you tonight. Let me tell you something tonight. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. There's a way back tonight in Christ. I don't care how much you've slipped up or you may have slipped up. I don't care what you did today. I don't care what you did last week or the week before. Tonight, yes, this very moment, there's a way back in Jesus. Amen. It's because tonight, my friend, Jesus sent, came down to this head, fully man and fully God, and gave his life upon Calvary. The price that me and you should have paid. Jesus paid it in full, not by money, silver, nor gold, but by the precious blood that ran from his body. Amen. The Bible says he gave his life as a ransom. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. The Bible says that he took your sin upon himself, he took my sin. The Bible says he who knew no sin became sin. So tonight you can become the righteousness of God. So no longer tonight will God see you as a sinner. But now he will see you for the eyes of his son Jesus. There's a way back for you tonight. Maybe tonight you come back into the world. Come to church as much as you want. When a man woman is back in the back A man going back to the night. Slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. Before you know it. 
You'll find that you're a million miles away from God. There's a way back for you tonight. Why is there a way back? It's because the God that I said it was beat to our recognition. It was led like a lamb to the slaughter. It was punched. And then a crown of thorns. It was beat 39 times with a cap of nine tails. It was beat with a wooden cane again and again and again. It was made to carry his own cross. And even though he carried the cross and didn't have the strength to carry it, he had the strength to carry you. He had the strength tonight to carry your sin. He had the strength tonight to carry the sin of the world. He took him to the top of Calvary and he crucified and named it and then put him to He demonstrated his own love in this that while we were still sinners, he chose to die on the cross. Why me and you chose the world, Jesus chose the cross. Why we chose to dwell with the pigs and eat with them, Jesus chose the cross. And the Bible says that he breathed his last, he took him down from the cross, he placed him in the tomb, called him to the word of God, the tomb couldn't hold him, the cross couldn't keep him, because on the third and glorious day, Christ Jesus rose again. Amen. And the God that I serve tonight, he is here. He is alive. And because Jesus lives, you can have life. No matter how much you've made mistakes, no matter how bad you feel in your seat tonight, no matter how far you feel from God, you are a prayer away. A man said to me a few days ago, so I feel like I'm a little mile away from God. So no, you're not. I said, you're a prayer away. And let me tell you something tonight. You may be feeling that tonight in your seat. That you're a million miles away from God. Only you know tonight where you are in God. Only you know. You know where you are tonight in God. You know exactly where you stand in the things of God. Tonight, if you're on the right side or not, you are a prayer away. You can be restored tonight. You can be restored. You can be forgiven. The Bible says, if you confess your sin, I am willing and just I will forgive you of all your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. The Bible says it there, across the clock, Romans 10, verse 9. If you confess in your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe it in your heart that God rose you from the dead, you will be saved. Because it's your mouth that you confess with, but it's your heart you are justified with. Tonight, no longer do you have to label pigs. Why label pigs when you can be in the presence of a king? Why heap of pigs that one, one day, when you leave this world, you'll be in the bank of, the bank of heaven? And you'll be eating and drinking with Jesus and the saints of God. Tonight I'm going to finish. But one minute more on the boy. The message is going out in this place. It's your choice what you choose to do. Are you going to be like this young man and come to his senses? He acknowledged the state of his life. He acknowledged the condition that he was in. He acknowledged what he wants out of your father. Tonight he acknowledged what he wants out of Jesus. You can be restored tonight. There's a way back. The devil will tell you no. You messed up too much. No, 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 no. According to the word of God, there's a way back for you tonight. There's a time of restoring. A time of refreshing. That comes from the Lord tonight. So tonight I'm going to bow our heads.